Hey everyone, welcome back. We're ready for another deep dive, and today we're looking at Bitcoin. Ooh, Bitcoin, always exciting. Yeah, it is. And this time it's even more interesting because the price is dipping a little, but some signs point to something big on the horizon. Sounds a little ominous. Well, maybe good ominous. We'll have to see. What do you think? Let's find out. Okay, so the source material for this deep dive is a recent article called Bitcoin's Big Moment, Why Bitcoin's Future Looks Bright Amid Market Movements by Jeremy Rush, CEO of Johnny Blockchain. Okay. So let's jump right in and explore those signs together and see if Bitcoin is about to blast off. Okay, sounds good. So what really sticks out to me is this contrast we see between Bitcoin's behavior and the traditional markets. Oh, yeah. Bitcoin kind of zigged when everything else sagged, right? Exactly. So okay. Bitcoin hit resistance around $68,500 and pulled back. Mm -hmm. But we're not seeing that same pattern in stocks or bonds. It's like Bitcoin's playing by its own rules. Totally. Yeah. It's like it's got its own rhythm going on. Right. And even with this dip, it's been holding strong above that $65,000 support level. So it's like a little bit of a tug of war going on there. Yeah, and Rush suggests that as long as it stays above $66,000, we might be in for a massive upswing. Wait, he actually said massive. Well, he actually uses the word parabolic, but I think massive works too. Parabol. Oh, that's like next level stuff. Yeah, like shooting star kind of stuff. Okay, so then what is fueling this potential rocket ride? Well, one thing Rush points to is whale activity. Ah, uh, the whales, those big players always making waves. Exactly. He noticed the number of wallets holding over 100 Bitcoin has grown by almost 300. Wow, 300. That's a lot. Are they just like little baby whales? Maybe they're teenagers. But on the flip side, the smaller wallets have actually decreased by over 20,000. Hold on. So the big guys are stocking up while the little guys are swimming away. Yep. It's a classic sign of a bull run brewing. It does make you wonder what they know that we don't. Right. Like they're sensing something big. Okay. But it's not just the whales making moves. Mm -hmm. Rush also mentioned something about Microsoft considering Bitcoin. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. So their board actually recommended voting against adding it to their balance sheet. Oh, really? Yeah. But the fact they were even discussing it is a big deal. We're talking about Microsoft. Microsoft, exactly a tech giant. Yeah. If they embraced Bitcoin, imagine what that would signal to other companies. Right. It could yeah. be a domino effect. Suddenly, yeah. companies like Dell and NVIDIA might be thinking, Hey, maybe we should be looking at Bitcoin, too. Especially with all the inflation talk these days, Bitcoin starts to look pretty appealing as a hedge. Totally. It's like everyone's looking for a safe haven, and Bitcoin, with its finite supply and decentralized nature, is starting to make sense for a lot of people. Yeah. It's a whole different way of thinking about money and value. Right. And on top of that, there's been some interesting regulatory progress, specifically this Bitcoin rights bill that just passed in Pennsylvania's house. Yeah, that's right. This bill is all about protecting people's right to hold their own Bitcoin. Yeah. You know, what they call self-custody. Yeah. So it's like owning the deed to your house instead of renting it, you have full control. And it reinforces those core Bitcoin principles of individual sovereignty and financial freedom. Exactly. It's a big win for Bitcoin users. So we've got these positive signs from the Wales Big Tech showing interest in regulatory progress that supports individual rights. It really feels like there's a lot of momentum building behind Bitcoin. Yeah, it does. And it makes you wonder, are we on the cusp of a major shift in the financial landscape? What would happen if Bitcoin really does become widely adopted as a hedge against inflation? Wow, those are some big questions. And you know what? I think we should delve deeper into Russia's analysis, mm. especially what he says about the four hourly chart and these cyclical patterns. Let's do it. The four hourly chart is always fascinating. Yeah. And it hints that Bitcoin might be gearing up for another big move. OK, let's see what he has to say. All right, let's jump into that. Sounds good to me. So this four hourly chart, it's really fascinating. You see this recurring pattern. Yeah, like what kind of pattern are we talking about? Well, it's like a parabolic rise and then a pause, like it's taking a breather. Bitcoin taking a breather. <laughs> I like that. And then another rise and then a dip. So up, up, down. Interesting. Yeah. And what's really cool is that this pattern, it kind of reflects how people react, you know, to these price swings. Oh, yeah, totally. Like when it surges, some people cash out. Others are like, hmm, should I stay or should I go? Exactly. And then if things heat up again, boom, another wave of buying, pushing the price higher. It's like a financial roller coaster. It is. It's like a dance floor. Everybody's moving to the beat of Bitcoin. So where does this final dip in the pattern fit into all of this? Ah, uh, that's where it gets really interesting. It's like a shakeout. A shakeout. Yeah, the less confident investors, they get spooked and bail. And that creates an opportunity for the more seasoned players. Precisely. They use those dips to buy even more Bitcoin. 
Smart move. Yeah. So is that how Rush came up with that seventy-four thousand dollar price target? Is it just based on this pattern? Well, it's a combination of factors. He's looking at those support and resistance levels we talked about. Also, considering Bitcoin's historical price action. So it's not like a guaranteed prediction, right? Right. It's more like a roadmap with some possible detours along the way. Okay, that makes sense. But hey, speaking of exciting possibilities, let's talk about Microsoft. Microsoft, yeah. They were thinking about adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? I mean, even though they ended up not doing it, the fact that they were even considering it is huge. It's like a sign that big institutions are starting to take Bitcoin seriously. Right, it's becoming more mainstream. And they were looking at a pretty broad strategy, right? Not just holding Bitcoin, but maybe using Bitcoin-related services and technologies. Exactly. It shows how Bitcoin is evolving. It's not just a digital currency anymore. It's a platform for innovation. Wow. It's come a long way in a short time from a fringe experiment to challenging the entire financial system. It really has. And it speaks to the power of decentralized technology. Speaking of which, what about that Bitcoin rights bill in Pennsylvania? Why is that such a big deal? Well, it basically protects your right to self-custody. Self-custody means... You can hold your own Bitcoin. You don't have to rely on an exchange or a third party. Ah, so it's like you have complete control over your Bitcoin. It's like owning the deed to your house instead of renting it. I get it. So it really reinforces that whole idea of individual sovereignty. Right. It's a powerful statement about financial freedom. And it's happening at the state level. That's interesting. Yeah. Could this be a catalyst for other states to follow suit? creating a more Bitcoin-friendly environment? That's a great question to consider. So we've got these positive signals from the market, big players like Microsoft showing interest in regulations that support individual rights. Mm -hmm. It seems like a pretty optimistic outlook for Bitcoin, wouldn't you say? It does, but we always have to remember that every investment carries risks. Of course, Bitcoin can be volatile. Exactly. And there are always unforeseen events, you know, like regulatory crackdowns or security breaches. Right. You never know what might happen. Exactly. But even with those risks, it feels like Bitcoin is here to stay. It's definitely not a fad anymore. It's a force to be reckoned with. And the exciting part is we're still in the early stages. The early stages. Yeah. Who knows what innovations and possibilities are just around the corner. It's like we're on an adventure exploring uncharted territory. Exactly. And, you know, it's not just about the technology itself. What else is there? It's about the philosophy behind it, you know, challenging the status quo, questioning traditional power structures and exploring new models for financial freedom and individual empowerment. Wow. You're right. It's much more than just a digital currency. Exactly. It's about changing the way we think about money and value and our relationship with the financial system. And it makes us ask some pretty big questions. It does. Like, what would happen if Bitcoin really took off? How would it change our economies and societies? Would it lead to a more just and equitable financial system? Those are the questions we need to be thinking about. Absolutely. You know, it's so easy to get caught up in the price charts and technical analysis. Right. But you've reminded me that there's a whole other layer to Bitcoin. The human element. Exactly. It's about the people and communities who are embracing this technology and using it to build a better future. It's about the dream of a more decentralized, transparent, and equitable world. Yeah, it's easy to lose sight of that bigger picture. It is, but it's important to remember that Bitcoin is about more than just making money. It's about empowering individuals. Exactly. It's about giving people control over their financial lives and challenging the powers that be. It's like a whole new way of thinking about money and value. It really is. It's like a digital Wild West, you know? A Wild West? Yeah. With that same pioneering spirit, that sense of possibility, people are building something new outside the traditional structures. It reminds me of the early days of the internet, you know? Oh, totally. Nobody knew what it would become, but there was this feeling it could change the world. And look at it now. Exactly. And just like the internet... I'm sure Bitcoin will face resistance from those who benefit from the status quo. Oh, absolutely. But innovation has a way of winning in the end. I like that analogy. So if Bitcoin does live up to its potential, what kind of world are we looking at? I mean, what role will it play in our everyday lives? That's the big question, isn't it? It is. It's hard to say for sure. But one thing is clear. Bitcoin is forcing us to reimagine what's possible. To think outside the box. Exactly. It's pushing the boundaries of finance technology and even how we organize ourselves as a society. It's like we're entering a whole new era. 
and Bitcoin is leading the charge. And we all have a role to play in shaping this new era, whether you're a crypto expert or yeah. just starting to learn about it, your curiosity, your questions, they all matter. So to everyone listening, I say keep learning, keep exploring, and don't be afraid to ask the big questions because the future of Bitcoin and maybe the future of finance is being written right now. Couldn't have said it better myself. And thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of Bitcoin. It's been a fascinating journey. And until next time, keep on diving.